What's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest edition of No Mercy. I'm coming at you live from L.A. Um, obviously, uh, I'm not in my normal studios, but it doesn't matter where I'm at because any studio that I'm in is thanks to our official studio sponsor, FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel is the official sports betting company of the No Mercy podcast. You know, <clears throat> I'm the kind of person that <clears throat> I get pissed off easy. I don't stay pissed off. I live a good life. So I'm not going to bother myself or stress myself then by holding on to anger and disgust and irritation, but so much. But it doesn't mean that I avoid pointing out when I'm pretty pissed off. And this whole John ja Morant thing has me really, really ticked off. But not in this particular instance because of John ja Morant. Allow me to explain. This brother gets in trouble because he is seen singing and rapping with his shirt off at five o'clock in the morning at a club in Denver that we've now learned is a strip club. Um, and he's waving a gun. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the reports, he's broken no laws. It's not a good look. I'm not here to defend that it is a good look. He recently signed an extension that doesn't even kick in this didn't even kick in this year, kicks in next year, next season, starting him at $33.5 million. He's about $12.1 million right now. His salary is about to triple. He deserves it. And over the next five years, he has the potential to make over $231 million. That's just on his basketball contract alone. That doesn't include. The deal with Nike, with his signature shoe, which, by the way, he was the dude ordained to replace Kyrie Irving, who obviously had a falling out with Nike because of some of the things, the decisions that he's made and what have you. You got to deal with Power Aid coming down the pike. They hadn't invested in an NBA player, really, for the last five years, but they were going to invest in John, John Morant, and now that's potentially up in the air, even though I think somehow, some way, both will find a way to work itself out. So when we go on the air and we get into counsel and advice that we'd like to give to a John ja Morant, it's not hating. It's showing him love. It's trying to show him support. And I'll get into the whole brouhaha involving John ja Morant and the advice that he was receiving upon all of that stuff happening when we heard Shannon Sharp at FS1 getting into it with Steven Jackson from All the Smoke itself. I'll get into that in just a second. I'll get into that in just a few minutes. But before I get into all of that, let me tell y'all something. Can we at least take a moment while it's really good to pounce on John ja Morant in some people's eyes and talk about the foolish decisions that he might be making and talk about how he might be compromising himself, why he's had to step away from the game and how he's receiving the help that he needs in order to better deal with the stressful situations of life that he encounters. Before I get into any of that, could I just say that some people are just full of it? And this strip club in Denver is at the, is near the top of the list right now. You know, I'm not going to say the name of the club. Go look at the New York Post and read the article from there. I'm not going to mention the owner's name. Go read the New York Post and other publications where you see quotes from that person. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to say is this. If I'm a star athlete and I patronized your business by dropping $50,000 over the night, $50,000 out of, of my hard-earned money on your business, you can't have the decency to give me some privacy? We're reading reports about lap dances and we're reading reports about what time John ja Morant came and who he showed up with and what he was drinking and what he was doing. I would never go to that establishment again in life. Has anybody brought that up? 
John Morant didn't break any laws. Is it not a legal establishment? I believe it is. Now, we can lament his behavior caught on video. We can lament the stupidity of him letting that stuff on video. We can lament how foolhardy it was for him to depart from a game, go to Denver, Colorado, be there till five in the morning. We could even say that's why they lost to Denver that night. We could bring all of that up. But that doesn't absolve the establishment. To me, if you got strippers, you've got strip club owners and, and, and folks talking and talking about it. Not only did they say he was there, they tried to couch it by saying he's a definitely a respectful gentleman. We've seen members of the Denver Broncos and, 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 and the Colorado Rockies and, and the Denver Nuggets come in here and they acted far more belligerent. Or anything. He was, John Moran was a perfect gentleman. Oh, shut up. Just shut up. The fact of the matter is, what are you talking about him for? He came to your establishment. He patronized your establishment with $50,000 worth of his money in one night. And you singing like birds to the media. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You think that helps your establishment? As far as I'm concerned, it should be a warning to anybody. Don't go there if you want privacy. Because they will tell your business. They will sing like and chirp like birds. That's what they will do. He should never go there again. And any athlete that knows about that establishment should never go there again, ever. Now, I'm not one for strip clubs. It's not how I roll. I'm a bit older in this day and age. And even when I was younger, I've never had a proclivity for strip clubs. I never liked the smell. Now, how would I know that? Because I've been there before. I was young a long time ago, long time ago, long, 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 long time ago. I was there. You know, you hear enough about Magic City in Atlanta, you got to find out what it is. About the Penthouse Club in New York City, you got to find out what it is. But once again, long time ago, long, 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 long time ago. I ain't been there in decades. Okay? Ain't been there. But my point is, If I had gone and they talked about my business, I'd never go there again, ever in life. So I just wanted to point that out. And I think the question needs to be asked, how appropriate is it for photos to be shown? Because we're seeing that too. Now, in this day and age, to all the professional athletes and to anybody, anybody really, get the hell over it. We live in a different age. You walking out in the streets, everybody got a camera on their cell phone. I'm innocently going out to dinner and people are flicking cameras at me. I, I can't stand it. I hate it, but I accept it because I know there's nothing I can do about it. People have a right with their camera phones to take pictures of whatever they want to take pictures of. To take videos of whatever they take video of. You have to make sure you guard yourself and you don't give them the fodder, the content, to use against you. That's what you have a responsibility to do. Particularly when you're the face of a franchise. I happen to be the face of a couple of franchises. ESPN would be one of them. No Mercy would be the other. So the manner in which I conduct myself is a reflection on me and anybody that works with me. Period. I'm in business with Cadence 13, not just myself. I'm represented by the William Morris Endeavor Agency. I don't just represent me. I have an obligation to take all things into consideration when I'm conducting myself. And if I conduct myself in unsavory fashion in public view, then I deserve whatever my comeuppance entails, period. Those are big boys and big girl rules. There's no way around it. That's what you have to deal with. But that doesn't mean that we don't get to ask the question as to whether or not it is appropriate or not for a business establishment to be leaking photos along with content that emanates 
from the establishment. It's a legal establishment. It was clear he wasn't breaking any laws, no matter what we may think about his decision making and putting himself in that kind of position. The bottom line is there there were no criminal acts that took place. For the establishment to to sing and chirp like birds is an establishment nobody should want to go to again. Period. Having said that, back to John Morant. Clearly, he's got some issues. Clearly, he's not proud of the decisions he's made. The Memphis Grizzlies as an organization isn't proud of the decisions he's made. The NBA isn't proud of the decisions that he's made. That forced guys that I consider colleagues that I've gotten to know over the years, and dare I say are friends, and Shannon Sharp and Steven Jackson. They had a difference of opinion about this whole John ja Morant brouhaha. I'm here for it. Not because of them, but because it's a bigger issue that transcends all of us that needs to be discussed. Ain't no need in running from it. So I'll be damned if I'm going to. There's a lot more to say about this. So stick around. You're listening to No Mercy with your boy Stephen A. Don't touch that dial back with more in a minute. All right, ladies and gentlemen, today I want to talk to you about an amazing place. We're talking about Etsy. We're talking about a place where you can find rugs, sofas, jackets, wall art, jewelry, furniture, all in one online marketplace. And the best part, you're supporting independent sellers and the beautiful items they make. Etsy has items for all budgets and any occasion. You might be going holiday shopping for your significant other, or you might want to buy your child a gift to bring to their teacher. Whatever it is, guess what? They've got it. I know they had it for me. I was looking for some furniture for my new crib. I found it. I found a beautiful sofa, beautiful coffee table next to it. I loved it. I enjoyed it. I bought it, damn it. And I had a good time with it, okay? New to Etsy. Etsy, use the code NEW for 10% off your first purchase. That's code NEW. Maximum discount value of $50. Offer ends June 30th, 2023. See terms at Etsy.com slash terms. For home style and gifts, shop Etsy.com. That's E-T-S-Y dot com. Guess what, y'all? Etsy has it. I'm going to let y'all all in on a little secret here, okay? I want to go gluten-free. I'm not there yet. But I'm aiming to get there, okay? And that's why I'm so thankful that Green Chef exists. Some of us are trying to live healthy lifestyles, you know. Some of us need to live certain dietary lifestyles, whether due to an allergy or a particular preference. And that's why a lot of people, including myself, are thankful for Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well with meals that fit every lifestyle. Keto, check. Vegan, check. Gluten-free, check. All made possible because they bring you 30-plus recipes every week. I'm talking sesame ginger chicken for you keto and gluten-free folks. I'm licking my fingers right now after that last bite because that pan sauce, that pan sauce, I'm sorry, is so good. Let me tell you something. And their meals are protein-packed. If you so choose, three items each week in their newest collection have an average of 40 grams of protein per serving. Greek chicken salad, enchilada spiced turkey bowls. If you want to bulk, they've got the protein. This is me telling you to shake off that winter slump and start spring by eating well with some delicious recipes. Go to greenchef.com slash mercy60 and use code mercy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. That's greenchef.com slash mercy60 and use code mercy60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. You know, <clears throat> there's always a bigger issue to broach when stuff like this happens. Um, for those of us who are black men, we look at things from a systemic perspective on a lot of different occasions. And we automatically adopt or look to adopt a position that's somewhat supportive at the very least of any of us that are going through some things. People like myself and various others, we're going to call it like we see it, but how we see it sometimes differ from case to case. Shannon Sharp, um, 
he's got his podcast, but he's also on the show Undisputed with my man Skip Bayless. Um, and he spoke about John ja Morant, and he was giving advice and counsel to John ja Morant. And Steven Jackson supposedly, at least according to reports, disagreed. When I saw them both speak, they clearly had dissenting opinions. Steven Jackson was of the mindset. And by the way, Steven Jackson's my guy. He does all the smoke with my brother, Matt Barnes. They do an outstanding job uh, with their podcast. I'm friends with both. They're both great. Um, but we disagree from time to time. And that's okay. You know, I know people use clickbait and all of that other stuff because people ain't got nothing better to do. You know, you know, they try to create stuff that ain't there, but that's fine. Okay. Oh my God, Steve, Stephen A. I mean, he, 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 he crushed such and such. What such and such crushed Stephen A. When all we did was have a difference of opinion. All right. But that's how you have to make sure to get people to click on your, on your videos. I understand. In the case of Steven Jackson, he went on, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't have the quote directly in front of me, but he basically went on video and said, all of these folks talking about John ja Morant, hell with all of that. Do you, do you live your life? And Shannon Sharp, I don't know whether it was before or after, but his opinion was of a different mindset where he was talking about, you know, once upon a time growing up, black folks was not, wasn't just raised by their family. They was raised by their neighborhoods. People looked out for one another. You gave counsel and advice because you wanted people to avoid the minefields that lied in wait. I'm paraphrasing again, but that's essentially the crux of what he was saying. Let me state for the record, I wholeheartedly agree with Shannon Shaw. And I wholeheartedly disagree with Stephen Jackson on this particular issue. Shannon Sharp is absolutely right when he talks about what used to happen. He's absolutely right when he alludes to how, as black folk, it was neighbors, it was adults, it was friends, it was family members, it was parents, it was aunts, it was uncles, it was everybody. Neighborhoods helped raise kids. You told them what right from wrong was. You talked to them about the minefields, about the traps that lied in wait that could ultimately lead to your downfall. You guarded against that like the plague. Yes, we looked at things systemically and we talked about the kind of things that we had to watch out for because the system isn't designed to be in our favor. It's designed to be against us. That guess what? We're playing behind the eight ball. We talked about all of those things. But we also made sure that it wasn't just the system that was responsible for anything that led to our demise. We had a role in that too based on the decisions that we made. And we encouraged one another to guard against it. Whether it be via tough love or beyond. That's what we did as a community. Stephen Jackson is of the mindset, live your life. Live your life. Well, here's what I would say respectfully to Stephen Jackson, who once again does a great job of all the smoke. I love Stephen Jackson. I ain't here to throw no shade on it. We disagree on this, on his particular position on this subject. That's all. Nothing more. I've been on all the smoke before. Damn it, I'm going back on. Matt Barnes says he's going to bring me back on in a few months. Talk about my book. I'd love to. There ain't no hate going on here. But it's a subject that needs to be addressed. Respectfully, Stephen Jackson, that's the wrong advice. It's the wrong advice. And here's the reason why. John Morant, I don't want to hear anything about his money, y'all. He's making $12.1 million this year. The $50,000 he dropped at the nightclub, I will remind you, he gets paid about $147,000 per game. Divide $12.1 million into 80, by 82, and that's what you get. So understand that $50,000 to you is not the same as it is to him. Understand that he already knows he's got a five-year contract signed that kicks in next year. 
that could net him over $231 million. Next year, $33.5 million, triple the amount that he's making right now. John Morant is going to make $408,000 per game. Don't come to me with $50,000 sweat in his pocket. Just admit what you really, really feel in America and everybody else beyond. You mad you ain't making that money. I know I am. I wish I was making that money. I ain't mad about it, but I wish I was making that money. Hell yes. Hell yes. $50,000 to him ain't the same as $50,000 to you any more than $50,000 was to Allen Iverson back in the day or Michael Jordan back in the day when people were sweating because he'd go to Atlantic City to gamble. Oh, my God, Michael Jordan, he, 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 he lost a million dollars. Well, damn it, he's a billionaire. Now, maybe he wasn't back then, but he was making about 40 to 50 million a year from Nike alone. What you sweating his money for? It ain't yours. Get over it. So this is not about money. When we're talking about Stephen Jackson's position compared to that of Shannon Sharp, it's about a bigger issue. Live your life, Stephen Jackson. My brother, respectfully, here's what I will say. Everybody ain't you. And they damn sure ain't John Moran. When we're talking about behavior that could potentially lead to someone's demise, you're painting a picture. I'm talking about in general. I'm saying us as folks talking about this issue. What you're trying to do is paint a picture for the masses to absorb. When you tell somebody to just live their life and don't concern themselves with the consequences, do what they want to do. Understand where that can lead them. If your job, ja Moran, based on what I'm not reporting anything, I'm just talking about based on the reports that are out there and them talking about that he's gone away to seek some help or whatever. It indicates a problem. We don't know whether it's drugs or whether it's alcohols. Are we going to advise somebody to just continue living that kind of lifestyle? I'm not talking about John Moran. Here. I'm talking about in general, Stephen Jackson. Are we going to advise somebody to do that? What if it could lead to a drug addiction? What if it could lead to alcoholism? Is that advisable? And when we take somebody greater than ourselves into consideration, meaning the masses, don't we have to take into consideration the fact that they might not have $12.1 million to fall back on like John Morant does this season? Or $231 million to fall back on over the next five years as John Morant has available to them? The hell with John Moran for a second. Let's talk about Steven Jackson. You're a champion. You are a hell of a player. A lot of heart. Wasn't scared of anything. And by the way, you showed up in big games a lot. You weren't one of them brothers that folded once times got tight. You showed up. Everybody can't be you. So when you advise somebody to just go ahead and live their life and not have any regard for what people think or say, the bigger issue is, is that helpful? We know you got love for John Morant and whatever, but guess what? I believe Shannon Sharp does as well. I believe all of us as black men have love for one another. And I know sometimes it's unfortunate because we look at our community and, and, and black folks are the first people to, 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 to bring black folks down or to hate on folks or whatever. I don't believe that's what Shannon Sharp was doing. I believe that Shannon Sharp was genuinely concerned about John Morant and was spewing advice that he thought would be helpful to John Morant down the line for the long haul. As I'm sure you're doing, Stephen Jackson, you don't want John Morant to fail. You don't want him to fall on his face. You don't want him to lose everything that he's earned and he's worked hard for all of his life. You don't want that for that, brother. So what are the kind of things that can lead to someone's potential downfall? We can't sit here with a straight face and assume that what John Morant, what he's embroiled in right now is good for him. It could end up being good for him if he learns from it and eradicates 
those mistakes that he's made to put him in this position. But if he continue going down this path, where's that going to get him? Where's that going to get him? So that's all I mean when I say I respectfully disagree with Steven Jackson compared to what Shannon Sharp was saying. And for those that will sit up there and say, well, why Shannon Sharp got to say that? He's got a television show. Just like I have a television show. We get paid to give our opinions. And by the way, so does Steven Jackson. He ain't doing it for free. There's some things he may do for free. Just like there's something Shannon, myself, and various others, Rob Parker, Chris Boussard, Ryan Clark, Marcus Spears, Kendrick Perkins, the list goes on and on. We're all in this business. But when you have a job to pontificate, to commentate, to prognosticate, to speak on a bevy of different issues, those things are going to happen. But at the end of the day, where does your heart lie? Steven Jackson and Shannon Sharp's heart lies in the right place here. I just think the advice that Steven Jackson was giving John ja Moran about do you, do you, do you, well, wait a minute. What does doing you entail? Somebody does have the right to run their life into the ground to ruin everything they've worked for to build. You absolutely do have that right. Would we advise them to do it? I don't think so. And I certainly didn't interpret Shannon Sharp giving John Morant that advice. And I don't think that's Steven Jackson's intent either. Both are good brothers as far as I'm concerned. That mean the absolute best for most of us, if not all of us. But I think that when you're sitting in these seats, to highlight what somebody like John ja Moran is going through, what led to him going through this now, and what he can do to alleviate those concerns moving forward so he can live his best life, I think that Shannon Sharp was on point. Club Shay Shay. He'll probably say it there too. I just want to say that. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, it's not shade. It's not hating on anybody. It's not being critical of Steven Jackson or Shannon Sharp. They're both my brothers. Love them both. Good people. Hearts in the right place. I just think in this particular situation, Shannon Sharp's advice was on point. Period. I got to disagree with Steven Jackson in terms of live your life, do what you want to do. Yeah. We can do what we want to do, when we want to do it, how we want to do it. That's absolutely true. But there's a price. And we got an obligation to highlight what the potential prices may be and whether or not it may be too steep for somebody to pay. Yeah, John Morant loves basketball. Yes, he does, without question. But he also happens to be spectacular at it. He is a superstar. He knew he could be a superstar, and he wanted to be an NBA player. He didn't want to do that to play for free. He wanted to get paid. So why get in the way of your own money if you don't have to? I'm going to close out the show with some closing remarks about this because I still got more to say. I'm not finished. This is No Mercy with Stephen A. Back with more in a minute. Oh, baby, March Basketball is here, and there's no better place to watch the action and get in on the action yourself than with FanDuel Sportsbook. This March, take your first shot at college hoops with FanDuel Sportsbook and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks on a bracket, and you'll land 200 in bonus bets. Win or lose, that's 200 you can spend betting everything from the money line to point spread to that 5 versus 12 seed matchup you've been eyeing. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. There's no better place to bet on the tournament than FanDuel Sportsbook. Sign up today by going on to FanDuel.com mercy and make every moment more with FanDuel. 
all tournament long. Tournament plus in select states. First online real money wager only $10 deposit plus required. Refund issued as an non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. Colorado, Iowa, Missouri, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Virginia. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342. Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org Virginia. You know me, you know I'm all about getting ahead, whether it's my career or my well-being. I'm all about the hustle, and that's why I'm getting ahead of the thinning here with Nutrafol's whole body approach to hair growth. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement, clinically shown to improve your hair growth, thickness, and visible scalp coverage. They go beyond genetics to multi-target the root causes of thinning, like stress and nutrition. And Lord knows I need it for all those reasons above. And you want consistent reliable results. In a clinical study, men showed progressive improvement in hair growth and thickness after three and six months. That's why it's trusted and recommended by more than 3,000 top doctors. Plus, they don't use any ingredients I wouldn't want in or on my body. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com slash men and entering the promo code MERCY to save $15 off your first month's subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. Plus, free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com com slash men spelled n u t r a f o l dot com slash men promo code mercy. You know, <clears throat> another person that I wanted to highlight in terms of what they had to say about this whole John Moran situation is Hall of Fame of Paul Pierce, the truth. <sighs> See, times like this gets real, real tough because I can go off with the best of them. But I try to understand when people's hearts are in the right place. I try to understand the level of sensitivity that they bring into a situation. I try to understand, you know, where they're coming from when they say what they say and then deduce it to layman's terms so we'll all understand where everybody's coming from. Paul Pierce's words need to be addressed as well. Because, quite frankly, I think he's missing something. And I know that a lot of people are going to want me to get into Paul Pierce and he was working at ESPN and he's gone and what he got himself caught up into. I'm not doing that. I got love for Paul Pierce, too, and mad respect for him. And by the way, what he said and what I'm about to read to you that he said isn't entirely wrong. A matter of fact, it's not wrong at all. It just misses the big picture. You can't just say what you say and ignore the big picture, particularly when it comes to us. America, if you're listening out there, black folks are tired. We're tired of the bullshit. When the whole social justice movement was going on in the aftermath of George Floyd's murder and you saw people protesting in the streets of America. By the way, they weren't just black folks. There's a lot of white folks. There was a lot of Hispanic folks out there, too. Everybody want to point to the mayhem that was taking place in the streets and the crime that was taking place and all of this other stuff and act like it was just black folks. Oh, no, 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 no. There were white folks committing crimes. There were white folks hitting police officers and throwing stuff at police officers and stuff like that. Hispanic folks as well. We were all in it together because there's a level of disgust that has permeated through this country. The United States of America, and I know I'm heard internationally, but I'm saying that for the purposes of being right here in the United States of America, there's a level of disgust. We are sick and tired of it. Tired of the BS. But as black folks, we do have an obligation to at least recognize and be sensitive to the fact there's a lot of white folks out there that's tired of the subject of racism because you, I had one white dude that I've known for 30 years that I probably would never speak to again in life because he was such an ass. And the reason why I say that about him is because 
His whole position was, I'm sick and tired of racism and stuff like that. And, you know, black folks walking around acting as if we're uh, we're oppressed. How are you oppressed? I'm making 60,000 a year. I was like, that ain't the damn point. I said, if you want to pick up a specific incident and to say, this doesn't involve oppression. This doesn't involve racism. This doesn't involve prejudice. That's entirely different than saying I'm tired of racism. I'm tired of that being an excuse. The hell with that. It doesn't exist. I said, you're a white man. You don't have a right to tell black folks what the hell we should and should not feel based on history and the historical impact that it has had upon our community. You don't have a right to do that. And that is what he couldn't compart. And why I told him, don't ever speak to me again until you're surrounded by black people. Cause I want you to say that to their face and tell me it's okay. When you can say it in front of a bunch of black folks, instead of just me who you've known for 30 years, Vaguely, by the way, because I haven't I've only seen him once in 30 years. I said, then come talk to me. Because I knew that would shut him up because he'd never say that in front of a bunch of black folks. But I do think it's important to highlight the fact that you do have folks out there who are not black who are sick and tired of the position that black folks take, which means that we have an inherent obligation to be even more careful about making our points so people will understand specifically where we're coming from, why we're coming from the positions that we're coming from, and go from there. So I get back to Paul Pierce. I want to read two quotes to you that he said. I'm pulling it up on my cell phone here. Paul Pierce says, let me read the first quote. Let me get this right. First thing he said was, I don't care what y'all say about Ja, as in Ja Morant. I carried a gun after I was stabbed. Y'all don't know what he's going through. Everyone got something to say until you really know what's really going on in someone's life. When you black and rich, you a target, period. That wasn't all that Paul Pierce said. Here's what else he said. But we glorify and normalize all the rappers who do it and get paid from waving guns and rap videos making millions. I'm trying to understand. Make this make sense. What crime did he, as in John Morant, commit? <sighs> Paul Pierce. You know better, bro. Stop. You know better. John Morant did not commit a crime. But Paul Pierce, when you were playing for the Boston Celtics, when you were en route to winning a championship in 08, going to the NBA Finals in 2010, being a perennial title contender, for the better part of a five-year period from like 08 to 12. Were you seen in strip clubs with your shirt off, waving a gun? Were there reports about you drinking whatever hard liquor you were drinking like it's a bottle of water? Were there folks from the strip club establishment highlight how much money you paid and doled out to people giving you lap dances and all of this other stuff? Was that going on with you? I don't recall. I don't recall that going on about you. Not then. You know why? Because you not only represented yourself, you represented the Boston Celtics. You represented the city of Boston, Massachusetts and its outskirts. And you represented the NBA. And let us not forget, you also were playing in a league that was hovered over 
by Commissioner David Stern. Now, to you and Stephen Jackson and various others, what would David Stern have done? If David Stern, the former commissioner of the NBA, God rest his soul, were alive today and still the commissioner of the National Basketball Association, what would Commissioner Stern have done? See, it's inside stuff we're talking about right now. You can act like you don't know if you want to. I'm going to say this right now because Adam Silver is, is far more into processing than Commissioner David Stern was. So he thinks about the process. He thinks about John Morant, the issuing the statement, the Mia culpa, acknowledging that he needed help and going to get it and allowing the Memphis Grizzlies to purview that situation. And for the NBA community in conjunction with the Players Association and what have you, reaching their own conclusions rather than bringing a heavy hand down. Steven Jackson can tell you this. When the... The, the malice at the palace and Auburn Hills involving Ron Artest took place. Go back to the press conference of Commissioner David Stern. What did he say? He suspended everybody. And they asked him during the press conference, did you put it to a vote? He said, yes, it was unanimous. One to zero. That was his quote. In other words, damn everybody else. I'm making this call. It's not open for discussion. There's not a process we're going through. It is what it is. My subordinates will deal with this. The league will deal with this. The Players Association will fall back. We don't give a damn what anybody says because I don't give a damn what anybody says. This is what is happening. And he did it. That was Commissioner Stern. If John ja Morant no crime having been committed was seen doing the same exact thing with Commissioner David Stern alive and in position as the commissioner of the NBA. Paul Pierce, what would Commissioner Stern have done? You and I both know it would have been a minimum 15-game suspension for John Moran. Minimum. Y'all know it. I know it. Fair or unfair, that's what would have happened. And you know it, Paul Pierce. You know it. No, John Morant did not commit a crime. Would you have admitted, Paul Pierce, that you carried a gun? Would you have admitted that when Commissioner Stern was in play? When you were in the league? Would you have admitted that? You have a right to. You ain't breaking any laws. Guns registered, all that stuff is true. But remember, it involved an investigation. The Denver police had to investigate whether or not was a, crime, a crime was committed because John Morant flew in and had the gun on his person. These are the kind of things that are going on. And it brings us to a bigger issue that I want to broach before I get on out of here. See, <clears throat> I'm sick and tired of folks Lamenting and bitching about how money matters so much. Ain't digging about money. Ain't digging about money. Well, why are crimes being committed? We all know that most people that are in jail, it's over money. Most crimes that are committed, it's over money. Ain't nobody out here trying to work for free. The cribs we live in ain't free. The electricity ain't free. The food in our refrigerator ain't free. The cars we drive ain't free. The gas we pay so we can drive ain't free. The clothes on our back ain't free. See, this is one, it's moments like this that I appreciate somebody like P. Diddy who was seen on social media a few weeks ago going off. Everything's about money. Well, I want to say everything because your soul matters, your spirit matters, 
your relationship with a higher power matters. Nobody's trying to say that that doesn't exist. What we're saying is, from a realistic perspective, unfortunately, most things in life have involved money. When we think about black empowerment, what are we talking about? Economic empowerment. When Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. sat up there and talked about black folks being brought to this nation in chains. He also highlighted how we were deprived of land. But our European brethren, when they came over, they were given land. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. talked about how it's pretty difficult to ask folks to pull up themselves by their bootstraps when you've given them no boots to strap. And he alluded to the movement being about economic empowerment. Malcolm X talked about black folks having their own land and their own businesses. So you can build from within. You're still talking about economic empowerment. Why do you think I went off on Kyrie years ago when he was encouraging people not to participate in the play in the bubble? It wasn't because, oh, my God, I missed basketball, even though I did and everybody missed sports at the time. It was because if the players didn't play in the bubble, the owners would have had the license to rip up the collective bargaining agreement they had reached with the players using the force majeure provision in the collective bargaining agreement, thereby rendering all contracts null and void. Which means the $30 million plus that Kyrie was getting paid at the time would have been null and void. The $30 million plus LeBron James was getting paid at the time would have been null and void. Along with every other player, Russell Westbrook, Steph Curry. The list went on and on and on. Let's be accurate with what we're saying. Money ain't everything, but I'll be damned if it ain't a lot. If it ain't pivotal and important, we don't want it to be as important as it is. Unfortunately, it is. We got live golfers receiving shrapnels of criticism from everybody else because, oh my God, they're going for the money and they're doing business with Saudi Arabia. But we say nothing about the United States government doing business with Saudi Arabia. What do you think they're doing business with Saudi Arabia for? Out of the goodness of their heart, it's money. Russia invading Ukraine. Ultimately, at the finish line, they see money. More territory, more land, more sovereignty, more business. The list goes on and on. Why are we acting like we don't know? So when you give this kind of advice, Paul Pierce, and you want to talk about how John Morant did nothing. No, he committed no crime. But the NBA as a business, the Memphis Grizzlies as a business under the umbrella of the NBA, Nike as a business, Powerade as a business, the list goes on and on, have a right to talk about what's best for their brand. They have a right to say, yo, this isn't good for us. We don't want this kind of imagery. I'll take it one step further, Paul Pierce. Remember when Adrian Peterson was playing for the Minnesota Vikings and the Minnesota Vikings had to put him on the commissioner's exempt list in the National Football League? Because advertisers and sponsors refused to support the Minnesota Vikings after he was cited for exacting corporal punishment against his child. Where I'm from, Paul Pierce, My father, God rest his soul, would have served life imprisonment for what the hell he did to us when we were growing up. I got hit with a tree branch. My sister got her butt whipped with a broomstick. My father beat her so mercilessly when we were younger, the kids had to jump in and get on top of her 
for him to stop hitting her. Today, my father would have been arrested and thrown in jail. I'm saying that to say, even though I wouldn't condone corporal punishment, Adrian Peterson hitting his child with a tree branch or whatever the case may be, it's not beyond the pale. It's something that I was very, very familiar with. This day and age, they said, no, we ain't having that no more. That shit's going to change. So I can appreciate where you're coming from with John Morant. But the advice that you're giving, my brother, it doesn't fly. To repeat, for our audience here, because I'm going to make sure they know exactly what Paul Pierce said. I don't care what y'all say about Jai carried a gun after I was stabbed, y'all. I don't know what he's going through. No, and I'm sorry, y'all don't know what he's going through. Everyone got something to say until you really know what's really going on in someone's life. When you're black and rich, you're a target, period. That's what Paul Pierce said. Paul Pierce, he didn't get busted carrying a gun on him. He got busted waving the gun in the strip club with his shirt off while he was drinking and partying. That's not the same as you carrying a gun around after you were stabbed. It's two different scenarios. That's number one. Last but not least, the second part of Paul Pierce's quote, again, but we glorify and normalize all rappers who do it and get paid from waving guns and rap videos making millions. I'm trying to understand. Make this make sense. What crime did John Mar Morant commit? He committed no crime. But as Snoop Dogg has said on many, many occasions, along with various others, the rap industry is entirely different. In the rap industry, you're an individual. And as a result, somehow, some way, They've been able to monetize those kind of things. It hasn't been a hindrance or something that has derailed their aspirations. It will in the NBA. It will in the NFL. So if you're going to put out a quote like that, Paul Pierce, put out the whole truth. Say it's wrong like you're saying, but at least add the last sentence. The NBA, the NFL, professional sports is a product and fabric of corporate America. Ja, that doesn't fly in the industry that you're in. So my brother, don't let it get in the way of your money. Simple solution, he can afford to hire people who have a license to carry. And he doesn't have to carry at all. He can still be protected while in the same breath conforming to rules and regulations of an industry he elected to be in. Because at the end of the day, y'all, regardless of how many times we want to throw this out, it ain't slavery. You volunteered to participate, to be a representative of that sport and of that brand while having your hand out for their money. When you've got your hand out for somebody else's money, capitulation in some ways usually follows. That's the real world. That's business. Please stop acting like we don't know better. The time for the bull has to come to an end. That's it for this latest episode. Appreciate y'all listening in. I'll be back in a couple of days with the next one. Until then, remember, you don't have to know sports to know mercy. But in my case, it damn sure helps that you do know sports. And then some. Until next time, peace and love, everybody.